Welcome back to another episode of the Sports Dribble Podcast, powered by Sports Rewind. BJ, up the top there, mate. How you doing tonight? Good, mate. How are you travelling yourself? Yeah, mate, I'm good. Davo? Good as always, mate. Got a rum. Yeah. Can't complain. You beauty. Big week, fellas. Uh, big week of sport coming up and also a big week uh, had tonight. We'll uh, have some MLB, some cricket. NBL, uh, what else have we got there? Bit of uh, NRL action, but first we'll uh, go around the, the local grounds. Dave, mate, how was the cricket this week or last weekend? Easy for us, we had the bye. You're so, beauty. <laughs> no good no. for your score tally, mate. No, no, I've, I've been done, mate. Uh, the daughter's well and truly outdone us for the year. Uh, I think she had 439 runs. And I finished at 374. So, um, yeah, she's she's done me. And I knew she would. So um, they had their last game of the year, but uh, Ella's team there in the finals. Uh, Ashley finished off well uh, for her season. She finished the top run scorer and the top wicket taker for her team. Well so uh, she's done. Lauren's done. Um, she finished the top run scorer by close to 200 runs. I think, oh, wow. and Ella was the leading wicket taker for the women's second grade, um, and then our eighth grade, um, we finished second on the table, so we've got the uh, final coming up on Sunday. That, so somehow a, uh... I jagged, I jagged the leading run score for, for our team. So oh, how many did you end up with? Uh, three hundred and seventy, uh, yeah, three hundred and seventy-four. I think runs on the season. And then what was the average, mate? 49, I think. But the daughter's <laughs> the daughter's average, 439. Wow. She got out once. She got out once in the first game of the season. Didn't get hasn't didn't get out again. So yeah, she scored like 439 runs. So that was her average for the year. So uh, did, they have, did, they, did they have to retire after a certain score at that age group still? After 20 balls, they retire. But um, if the others retire or all the other wickets fall, they get to come in and bat. So uh, unfortunately with her team, they're, they're a pretty good team that can bat. So quite often she didn't get to come back in a lot uh, compared to some of the other teams. Um, so, but yeah, she did well to score that many runs off not a whole lot of balls. Unreal. Unreal. What about you, Randall? Any uh, sporting action, mate? Same old, mate. We had our uh, first senior baseball training session over the weekend. So it's now Wednesday and I still can't walk, but that's okay. Yeah. I'm still hanging. But uh, the kids, mate, they had their first little training session as well. They had a come and try day on Friday and they had another one on Sunday. So it was good to see all the kids getting back at it. And then it was just uh, state, state cup training again for baseball. So down at the yeah. knob. Got to see a little bit of uh, Davos Pirates taking on the uh, Wyong Wildcats there. Um, but other than that, mate, it's just same as for us. Lots and lots of training for the kids. Myself, when, is the, what, when is the state lots cup, lots mate? Oh, it's April, mate. Um, yeah. Weekend in April there. Middle weekend, I think it is, the school holidays. Um, down in Pitwater we're going. So yeah. should be uh, yeah. should be good. Pitwater Cup. Yeah, back, back in, in the, the day. day, it used to be yeah. uh, the old Pitwater Cup, and it was whoever won country championships used to went go. down from memory. Yeah. Uh, it yeah, was so always us or Central Coast, I think, usually. Oh, Illawarra were pretty good, though. Uh, they used to get a run there, too. Yeah, but it, is, it is Newcastle and Central Coast combined team. So, yeah, that would be good, good for the kids. Just it's all about playing games. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it was good to see a few kids uh, at the come and try day on the Friday, mate. I come and tried baseball yeah. first time yeah. in 10 years. I'm with you on the old arm, mate. It's uh, You'd fit in with hanging. the kids, mate, right height. Mate, well, there was a couple that were bigger than me, Davo, you know. <laughs> Randall's son was one of them. Yeah, and he's 11. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> How'd you go swinging that 34-inch? I actually went all right, mate. I... um. Yeah, it's hard to hit off the tee, though. The ball doesn't move. But uh, I did a bit of tee work and had a throw and uh, went and took some uh, 
hacks in the cage. And I tell you, I wasn't sore from throwing, Randall. I was sore from swinging. Both biceps were flogging <laughs> me for three or four days. So so you would have been like one of those kids you see on the memes that play t-ball that swing the big bat that's too big for them and swirl around and fall over as they yeah. try and run the purse was that you was it and, it was and, me, the, helmet, and the helmet falls over their face too because they got a tiny yeah. head yep well, i've got the the beer gut now Dave. whereas i didn't have that before so i've got a little bit more rotation i guess rotational power so uh yeah swing, that's what it's, swing all, that's what it's all about mate yeah now keen to get it started i think i'm uh off for the first couple of weekends of the the baseball with my work roster so should work in all right no doubt it will probably rain and we'll miss those games anyway it's usually <laughs> the way it goes probably let's kick off uh this week with the tidbits fellas i'm on the on the hawkesbury zero percenter tonight Ooh. um so our tidbits Sponsored by Hawkesbury Brewing Co. Uh, thanks to the team down there at Lizero uh, for sponsoring this uh, first little segment of the show. Uh, get down and grab a beer, grab a ginger, or if you're like me and really struggling, get on a zero percenter. Tastes unreal, and uh, I'm not going to have a hangover in the morning or feel like crap. But, <laughs> Here we go with our uh, tidbits. I think, Dave, you're going to kick us off this week, mate. What do we got here? Yeah, the first one, good old uh, – well, this week it is no Nolan Ryan or uh, Tony Gwynn, so we had to go digging. But it wasn't too hard to find things. Good old Bob Gibson. Uh, he's the only pitcher to win seven consecutive World Series starts, and if that wasn't a good enough feat, each one a complete game. So. Um, it says a lot about the guy, but when Major League Baseball lowers the mound because of this guy, shows how good he was. And that stat alone, like seven consecutive World Series starts and each one a complete game. Yeah. Unheard of. Unreal. You mentioned the um, lowering the, the mound. Mate, Toronto Tigers, I reckon their measuring tapes are wrong. I had a look at that mound on Friday or whatever it was, Randall. Nothing like the old Toronto number two. No, mate. No, they mate. must have bought in new laws. No, no Adelaide Street. Definitely no Adelaide Street either, mate. <laughs> hey, I'm out. I'm probably going to play <laughs> left field with the helmet because I can't play right field because Rand will be there. Second base champ. You'll be right. Oh, beautiful. What else you got for us, Davo? So another goat on the mound. Good old Greg Maddox. So... Uh, he walked no batters in 236 of his starts. So if that sounds insane, that's because it is. To go 236 starts in your career and not walk a batter. I'm lucky to go yeah. to 23 innings, two innings, let alone. Uh, but 236 starts without walking a batter. Yeah. Just a different game back then, wasn't it? Just yeah, dominated, yeah. threw lots of strikes. Yeah. yeah. 77 so, pitch complete games. He was just a machine that was pounding the strike zone. Like, he might have pounded the strike zone, but no two pitches were the same. Or the yeah. pitch would be the same, but the location wasn't, and he just painted. I do love all the means of him painting houses, but... You know, <laughs> only the edges. Yeah, only the corners. corners. Yeah, only the corners. Yeah. What's and next, Finally, mate? finally um, so they brought in a new stat in 1988 for, like, pe people that swing at the first pitch or have a hit off the first pitch. Derek Jeter has 650 first pitch hits, more than any other player, since the uh, pitch statistics were brought in. So 650 hits from the first pitch. So there's no there's no seeing a guy in. He's up there hacking from the from the word go. So, oh, Rochi. He used to do that. Never throw in a fastball down the middle. Yeah, hey, Rochi was never one. Best way to be, mate. Like, seriously, 
especially if you're playing these higher grades and you're a subpar player like myself, you know, you, the old nine and nine, you you pretty much know you're going to get it one down the middle first pitch. Same as kids these days, they're taught, oh, you know, you've got to take the first strike, rah, rah, rah. Mate, under 12s, under 14s, even under 16s, where, what, are they, what are the pitchers taught to do? Work from in front. So what do they do? Get me over fastball right down the middle, strike one. Mate, get your hacks in, and this shows not, why. Not for us old blokes, mate. I'm throwing a nice slow curve. It's yeah. like, yep, you want you want to pop up on that? Go for it. But I'm I'm yeah. starting you with a nice slow curve. Forget the forget the straight ball down the middle. Yeah, we only it's talking about this the other day, Dave. The yeah. old work backwards, and then when we get to the third, fourth, fifth innings, then it reverses up. Throw yep. a bit of traditional. Yeah, you know, yeah, as, as, as kids, they're, they're not taught that though either. That's something that comes with experience and you know age and experience. You know, yep. with young kids, they're just taught you know. Work from in front. You've got to work from in front. Get that first pitch fastball. And the kids that are hitting the tort, you know, you've got to take a strike. You've got to take a strike. You never swing at the first pitch. Well, when it's on your thigh-high fastball, first pitch, why wouldn't you? Yeah. Get your hacks in, kids. And with age and experience, it means you just can't rear back and just throw heat right down the middle and say, here you go, catch up and hit it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Anyone can uh, guess fastball, mate. Anyone but, can uh, guess fastball. But 650 hits on first pitch, that's that's a fair effort. It is a fair effort. Good on you. Mate, how's this one? Sitting here realising just how long a throw from deep shortstop the first base is when you look at it from this perspective. It's unreal that probably Patrick Mahomes throws about 10 of them a game. And uh, gives you a bit of a, a better understanding having a look at that, that's for sure. Yep. How's yeah, the uh, what, old... the, the 35 yard? What are you, the 30, 35 yard line, and then throwing it to the other 30 yard line? Yeah, the good old yeah. Coliseum, it's it's good for that, isn't it? Yeah, how is the uh, the seat seating though? Uh, when you're playing baseball there and you're Sitting this way, facing this way to watch the baseball. What was the other one? The Toronto. What was yeah, the, the Blue Jays? Um, the first Blue Jays stadium was like we'll, that we'll too. Get, we'll, we might get that out for next week. Yeah, we'll have to. It, it was quality. Uh, next one I've got is a uh, bit of uh, Charles Barkley here on some of the old NBA players that are going a bit soft. Wait a minute, you're going to make 70 million and you can't play basketball three or four days a week, then fly private. They got the best medical stuff ever created. People working with steel mill every day, I'm pretty sure they are tied too, but they can go to work every day. So, fair comment there from old uh, Charles. Very uh, true. I, I read that well, and couldn't agree more. It's like they're well, just pandered to these days, and I'm sorry. You didn't see Jordan or any of those guys sort of taking a day off? No, nah, no one said. You've seen it a lot now. They're just ticked over halfway through the year and they're seeing a lot more of it. Play the games. You're getting paid absolute fortune. Play them. Baseball's the same, mate. Baseball's the same, isn't it? It is. It you is. Know, you know, the, the Cal Ripken record. Yeah. No one will ever get close to that ever again. No. Not a chance. All right, Randall. All righty Greg Maddox holds the record for the most gold gloves in MLB history with 18 gold, gold gloves. Not bad. Not, Not bad. bad for a pitcher. Yeah, he probably didn't have to work too hard on that mound. You know, he just painted the edges as we talked about earlier. But, yeah, pretty bloody good. 18. And get the comebackers because no one's making good contact because he's moving the ball so much. But yeah. he was very agile. He was he, like he, he was. did. He was another infielder. It's like some pitchers, yeah, not bad, but he he was an infielder. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent agree. You look at some of the highlights. You see him on the socials all the time. They bring him up, and some of the plays that he makes off the mound of little, you know, squibbers off the bat, or you know, they've capped capped one down the line, or you know, bunt plays. He he was a good fielder. He was indeed. Eight, 18 is crazy. When you think like Brooks Robinson has 16, 16 and yep. one of the greatest, if not the greatest fielding third baseman of all time, 
and Maddox has more than him. So, yeah. yeah. It's crazy, it's isn't it? Next, Paxton Lynch. I love this one. It's the only quarter. Oh. The only quarterback to ever be benched in the NFL, the CFL, the XFL, and the USFL. He must be pretty good. Wow, he must be special. <laughs> but have you seen any of his stats, Randall? Uh, only a couple. We, I talked about this with a guy at work the other day, actually. He's a Broncos fan, and he said, mate, this guy is rubbish. <laughs> I'm just bringing up his. Um... That's a fair effort. That's a lot. That's a lot of, a lot of different leagues here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he, he threw. He's had five games. Um, he threw 792 yards. This is uh, in the for... NFL. Yeah, this is in the NFL. Have a look at who he actually come in to replace. Who, who did he replace? Did he get a chance? That was a Peyton. Have a look. <laughs> I can't. I can't see. Uh, Where is it? Oh, good. Tell we'll me. save it up for another time. That good, is it? Yeah. All right. We could make, we it, we could make homework. We could. We can uh, have a good chat about that one later. Righto. Righto. What, what do you got next? This was a gem. The last one. This was today. Um, I, I don't know how many people are watching much spring training, but obviously we all are. Um. The Orioles and the Pirates uh, come to the bottom of the ninth. Pirates were at home. Uh, they were up 7-4, I believe. And uh, the umpire said, well, that'll do. That's a day. Um, but spring training, you know, you want your pitchers and your hitters to get all the, and fielders to get all their work in they can get. So uh, the umpires left. And uh, Matt, both managers wanted to continue on. Players wanted to continue. So uh, they finished the game without the umpires. Yeah, the, uh, the catcher was calling balls and strikes, and um, yeah, they they played out the bottom of the ninth without any um, any officials. Well, that probably you know, better outcome too. It probably was, you know. I think they might have asked to have the uh, automated strike zone, but it didn't really come in for them. But um, yeah, all, it, it just all about getting that. those innings and That's and that right. bats in in spring training. So good on them. I'm sure. I'm sure those umpires have paid massive money at spring training. Come on. You know, everyone yeah, wants to get their work in. I'm sure they're not perfect either yet. They want to probably – they should be seeing more pitches as well. And In the Giants game the other day, they did it, played the bottom out when they didn't need to. Uh, umpires hung around for that one. Okay, well, good they on don't want to be sure. replaced by robots. Hang around and help out. These, guys want, to, these guys want to play, so – Get him in there. There's lots of spring training action happening. It's great. Oh, it's unreal. Let's close out the tidbits. Thanks to Hawksbury Bruin. Uh, get down and have a beer down there at Lizaro or uh, purchase yourself some takeaways. Um, and that's it Tasty. for this week for the tidbits. Yeah, there is plenty going on uh, in the baseball, fellas. The baseball spring training is back. It is awesome to see. Um, I watched a few bits and pieces over the last few days or probably last four days. Um, last couple I haven't seen a great deal of uh, we, over night shift, but it's been uh, good to have it on, but also just flicking through and seeing different prospects coming up and getting at bats. Um, is there anyone in particular that you guys have uh, seen that have sort of shone through? I think uh, was it Jordan Walker for the Cards? Yeah, um, he he started spring pretty well. He's one of the early favourites for Rookie of the Year. Yeah, and um, so he's he's shown a bit of pop with the bat so far. So he he's looking like um, he's one of the standouts for us so far. Yeah, no, he's been good. Um, Brett Beatty. From New York Mets, I don't know if you caught any of him. Um, I seen uh, two games with him in now. Um, been real handy with the bat, and he may get a little bit of a run at third base there um, for those guys. So he's been pretty pretty good to watch. About you, Randall? Yeah, uh, for the Brewers, Garrett Mitchell. He uh, had a little bit of a run last year. He's he's looked good again. 
good bat, good speed. He hit a couple of bombs uh, already. Um, and also looking at my Orioles, uh, Heston Kirstad as well. He's he's taken off as well. Um, he was a number one draft pick after um, Adley Rutschman the year after. So yep. Orioles obviously going rubbish. So they got number one two years in a row. And he's come, starting to come good too. So he, I think he first spring training, he hit two out. So that'll be, that'll be good. I've got a few signed cards of his. So perfect. bring it on. That's what you want. And it, yeah, it's, it's good, mate. It, I love, I just love spring training, getting to see all these kids yeah. come up and have a crack. And yeah, I can't wait to see some, some surprise packets that might actually break with teams yeah. coming into spring training. Mm. It's what about um, uh, Dave uh, with your Red Sox, mate? I um, yeah, what was his name? Oh. Cassis Tristan Cassis today. He yeah. hit his first bomb. He's number two ranked guy. The lefties. He's probably going to look at getting first base over Bobby Dale back. So yeah, uh, yeah, they've got big big tickets on him. So if he has a good spring, he sh- he should make the club out of spring training. Yeah. No, I, I'm agreeing with that. He'll probably get a run. Um, what about the other guy? I think he might have played a couple of seasons, but sort of in and out. Ryan Fitzgerald, I haven't seen much of him. Uh, do, do you know that name? No. He may, he may be a rookie, but he had a bomb uh, for Boston, and I've liked the way – I've watched a bit of Boston this year already. I don't know why I've watched more of their yeah. games. And, yeah, I'm hearing you. But, uh, say, mate, that's why you're watching him. He's looking pretty good. Uh, okay, a name him. I haven't heard of. So, uh, yeah, okay. Even like from previous years, like an OG that they tried Jeter Downs. Um, he was part of the Mookie trade, but I think he's now been traded off himself. So, um, yeah. But Fitzgerald, I'll have to have to go have a look at him. Yeah, no, nah, I enjoyed watching that so far. Um, for me, mate, Joey Bart's battling for a spot so it's been good uh he, he had a bomb today uh, i think it was a, a solo home run against san diego um the giants got done i think seven five by san diego but um he sort of stepped it up and i guess he's realizing that his spot isn't you know it's, it's not there yet so uh yeah he's got to step it up a bit but uh, some big things happen, obviously, with spring training. But what about Gavin Lux out for the year? That was nasty. I actually watched that one live and, whew, wasn't it nice. Terrible, didn't it? Yeah. I thought it was his ankle at first. Yeah. Same. Uh, ACLs, ACLs can't go that way. Yeah, no. and ACL, and, ACL and LCL, wasn't it? Um, I, I thought it was just ACL, but it might have been. Yeah. Yeah, they said that's it. Season done already. Yeah. yeah poor, crazy. Bugger. And poor bugger. Yeah, He's just, poor... just hoping that he was going to take off to Dana. Like, yeah. So, been a bit of hype about him for a couple of years now. And yeah, I just. The starting you know, shortstop yeah. was his. And you could just see the look on his face. The poor bloke. He, that's just happened. Season over. And you got all the reporters there wanting comments and all that. It's like. That would have to have been the hardest situation for him, knowing that, like, my season's done and now I've got to front you guys. So, yeah, yeah you feel for him. Yeah, I sent I see you guys that thing, that interview with him today and, yeah, he just broke down so many times. It just the emotion was just right up in his face. Um, yeah, obviously he was going to get his turn at being the starting Shortstop this year with Turner gone, and yeah, then that happens. So hopefully he comes back strong and uh, has a good recovery, and yeah, we look to see what he does next year. I guess. Well, that's it. He's young, so he's got he's got time to to still prove himself. So who's gonna replace him? I heard there's there's a whole. And there's three or four that are going to rotate through, including Mookie Betts. Gee. So yeah, from what I read I, today, 
Taylor would be one, wouldn't he? Chris Taylor, he's often the jack of all so. trades for the Dodgers. Yeah, that was three, I think. I can't remember who else it was, but yeah, Mookie Betts was one of them as well. So it'd be I interesting don't think to see that. Second base. He's yeah. who, who's, filled in. Who's currently second? Who was already planned to play second base for them? Not sure. Let's have a quick sure. look. Uh, it's Dodgers, we don't care about the Dodgers. The the Mets. Mets. Right. But yeah, it was um, pretty nasty. Nasty injury, though. You don't want to see that ever again. No. But yeah. Mate, I can't uh, pull this up. I don't know what it's doing. There so, are there are a few injuries floating around too from spring training already. Like, I mean, the Padres have been hit by a couple. Yeah. Yeah. Last um, now for the the Rays, he's done the bleak muscle. Yeah. So he's yeah. out for a little while. Yeah. Um, Brutal. So think one one soda. Oh no, he he was just calf tightness. He was he's been removed from the lineup. But Joe Musgrove, like broken toe, up, broken toe after um. A, the tr- a weights room incident. <laughs> he must have dropped the, the dumbbell on his toe, dropped the kettlebell on his toe or something. Oh, I did say that he did. He dropped the kettlebell. Yeah, okay. That's so brutal. Almost up, that's almost up there yeah. with Chapman. <laughs> yeah. The weirdest injuries. Yeah, well, we all know the truth. Fell over pissed at home. <laughs> Fair chance. Oh, there's, a, there's some quality moons out there with him at the moment. But, um, uh, no, the Pad- Padres locking up Manny, so uh, they've Man, really got – they've put their, like, a five-year window for him. Like, that's what half a dozen stars now locked up till 2027 or something. So they've given yep. themselves this 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 window, uh, and that's yep. without locking up Soto. And the talk is they're going to throw big money towards Shoei. So um, they could – well, could be overtaken the Dodgers as the powerhouse of the West. Yeah, well, yeah. Dodgers have lost a bit of a bit of power there, haven't they? Like, I don't know if they they won't be as strong this year as they have been the last few years, will they? From the stat casting, what was it called? The uh, zips, like the predictions. Uh, and they'll oh, say yeah. ninety wins for the Dodgers this year. So that's. What did they have last year? That over 100, didn't they? 100 and 105. Didn't they break break the record? Yeah. Yeah, they had 110, didn't they? Was it? it Anyway, it was up there. But, yeah, for them to say this is before Gavin Lux as well, so they're predicting 90. That's a big Uh, drop. I tell you what, the bloke that um, predicted it, he must have not been on the zero percenters because (laughs) he reckons the Giants are only two games behind him. Oof. So, mate, I don't, I, I really don't yeah, see that, but I hope what, it's the case. Their, what's their pitching rotation again? The Giants. Yeah. Well, you know the Zuka, the batting bat machine. Yeah, they've just got one of those. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, they got Logan Webb. Um, they they got a few um, new guys they lost, in. They lost Radon. Yep. Yeah, never heard of him. They still have Puerto. Johnny with his no, he's gone. He's gone, mate. He's gone. Um, mate, you know how good my memory is. Let me have a look. <laughs> well, oh, yeah, I, I haven't been watching much of the pitching. Um, that's going to any of the teams really, because it's all about who's hitting home runs and who's who's hitting. Um, yeah, yeah. The only pitcher the like one or two. Yeah, that's it. The only pitcher that I've Randall that I've really paid attention to is um, the Kyle Harrison that I'm keen for in, you know, for um, the Giants. But, yeah, other than that, um, my MLB app won't even let me in. How good's that? Perfect. Anyway. Next topic. <laughs> what <laughs> what else is happening with the spring training? Anything exciting for you guys? Well, WBC kicks off in what a week, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Do you guys so, see the um, Aussie team little doco, the eight minute doco they put up? I think no, I posted on Sports Rewind Facebook yesterday. I saw you minute, share it, but I haven't watched it yet. Eight minute doco, and it's got like the main sort of four or five players in it. Takes us through, you know, what it means to them and 
it's a pretty cool little doco and um yeah worth a watch eight or nine minutes but um yeah if you're not on our facebook page it's on there or i think baseball australia or australian baseball on youtube i think it is so um well, free one up. On YouTube, mate. get the hours up yeah beauty um yeah they've also been doing heaps over there with the um the kids in japan so it's been good to see they've been doing clinics and uh things like that their facilities that they're training at mustn't have change rooms because they walk around in their uniforms everywhere what's the go there i don't know i have been seeing this stuff on their socials where they they do their uh morning walk or whatever was it from, i uh, think maybe a rookie challenge or something around. rookie challenge you go and get coffee in the uniform would have to uh, be you're not going to walk in main main drag wherever they are japan yeah well, wherever they are in japan i can't fukushima. remember fukushima or something like that but yeah. they're up there they are all in barrel clavers because it's so cold <laughs> they just walk around their baseball uniform on yeah good luck yeah unbelievable right. it's nice and cool over there at the moment for them isn't it yeah three or four yeah. degrees i think they're saying so all yeah. Americans are over in sort of Florida and all that and Arizona and just nice 25 degree days sort of thing, short and t-shirts and where's the Aussies? Freezing their ass off. There was uh, <laughs> LSU. Uh, there was a couple of Aussie kids in action. I posted up the LSU link. Um, sorry, OSU, Oregon State University. And um, – that it had snow the day before they played there and it was like icy three degrees or something when they were playing they had to move the game back a few hours because of um the snow so that would have been brutal for him playing but yeah the young Aussie kid yeah with june long weekend isn't it yeah pretty much pretty much it's probably not as cold yeah and, and you can't have a rum to warm up either davo <sighs> Athletes, athletes. No fog, all right. no fog during the first uh, first couple of innings of the first game of the morning either. No, yep. that's it. Where's that's that fly it. ball? Where's that fly ball? Oh, yeah, ball. it's a home run. <laughs> oh, it's right in the collarbone. Thanks for coming. Yes, right. NRL, it's back this week. It's officially back. Yeah, yeah kicks buddy. off tomorrow night, doesn't it, Randall? Sure does. Thursday night. Parramatta versus Storm. Nobody really cares because they're both shit. <laughs> Parramatta. Now yeah. we've got a new team in there. Yeah, the got Dolphins. The Dolphins in, so teams now get the bye. Yeah, St. George start off with the bye this week. Yep. Friday night, though, it's what I'm looking forward to. 6 p.m. game, Warriors versus the Knights. I can't wait for that. Pretty excited, just quietly. That's a Expecting... loss for the Knights. <laughs> hey, it's the Warriors. Come on. Home Is game, Randall? Right? Where at? No, no, it's over there, mate. It's over there. It's, yeah, it's a um, loss for the Knights. Oh, I don't think it's Mount Smart. I don't think it's actually at Mount Smart. No, it's in Wellington. So, <coughs> yeah, it's interesting for the Warriors. But anyway, that uh, the good game after that, though, Penrith versus the Broncos in Penrith. That should be good a good matchup. game. Yeah, that should be good. Broncos have got a, fairly, a, a much improved team, I think, this year. They should be a lot better than they have been. And I think Penrith will come back to the pack. What do you reckon, Davo? I think so, because half their team's gone to Pen uh, the Bulldogs. Bulldogs. <laughs> but yeah. mind you, Pen Penrith still has a depth. When you win all three uh, grades last year, even if you lose a few, you've got that talent pool coming through. But it will be interesting to see how they do play, how they gel um, when they have lost some of their, some of their big guys. Yeah. So... Uh, I think they'll still be competitive. They'll be up there. I don't know if they will be the runaway like they were last year, but yeah. their squad's too good. So And Cleary's still coaching, um, yeah. so they'll be around. But uh, even like Manly versus Bulldogs should be an all right game. Uh, Tommy yeah. Turbo is back for, for Manly, so I'll be interested to see how the Bulldogs go with their new recruits. Uh, we've lost yeah. the Pommy Thompson. Luke Thompson, yeah. Luke Thompson. That's not That's good. A big that's a big loss for the Bulldogs and playing a Brookie first game uh, could be interesting. So I have yeah. a usual bet with my brother because he's a stupid Manly supporter. So uh, we'll <laughs> see what happens there. 
colour jerseys are they wearing the first week? Oh, I was hoping to be pride. Then we might stand a chance because half the team wouldn't play. Oh, to to Vita Pengai Jr. is out too for the dogs, I think, isn't he? I think so. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's not playing either. So that that's pretty tough when you lose those two guys. That's a mm. couple of handy players. Um, and and how's the old Roosters? They talk about the Bulldogs blowing up the salary cap years ago. How the hell can the Roosters be doing that? It's like I've got a, a mate who's a Rooster supporter and he's trying to carry on. I'll oh, go to uni for financial planning and all that. It's like, yeah, creative accountancy more like it. <laughs> yeah, mate, they just what Knights offered Dom Young something in the vicinity, vicinity of $2 million over whatever whatever period of time. And that still wasn't enough. He still went to the Roosters. Mm. So you can't say that 21-year-old kid or whatever that gets offered $2 million over six years or whatever is going to turn that down to go and play at another club that's going to pay less. Yeah. That, that's that's $2 million in my bank account I know I'm going to get. Yeah. Like, I, I just don't get it. And then they signed the, the bloke from Penrith. Um, how about that? I'm having a mental blink right now. Yeah, yeah, they keep signing um, these guys. They've already got a full roster that's being paid a bucket load, and now yeah. they're signing all these other guys. It's like, hang on. Sounds yeah, like the yeah. The thing that the thing that's going to annoy me though is I was watching a bit of the NRL 360 last night on Fox, and um, the the Roosters are now seeking um, a salary cap relief. Yes, for, Ang- for Angus Crichton, they're saying he's Crichton. suffering from mental health issues so they want to get his he's not going to to play for them so they want Mm. his his salary removed from the salary cap yeah yeah they're paying 750 or 780k a year and it's like you've got to be kidding me don't you like oh you just signed you just signed three or four reasonably high profile names and then you want to offload one for medical issues like come on yeah. Just something's right. something something's not right. But no. you know, Newcastle should have done that with Ponga. Oh mate. It's still on the cards, I reckon, but anyway. <laughs> we'll see. He's got to get through a season playing five eight, doesn't he? We'll see what happens when he's got a season of second rowers running at him. Yeah. See how his concussions go. But you know, is what it is. Yeah. Other games but... other games though, we go to Saturday. As Davo said, those those uh, dirty dogs take it on the eels, uh, the the manly sea eagles, even. Four Pines Park, it's now called or something. It's like yeah, well, it's Brookie, yeah. it's Brookvale. It's still a shit hole. Pretty much. <laughs> soon, the sooner they can do something to that ground, the better. I think. Got to do that one up. Blow it up. Bit, <laughs> yeah. You also got Cowboys taking on the Raiders. That'll that'll be interesting. I'd, both teams, I don't know what they're going to do this year. It'll be, that'll be interesting to see how they both go. Well, Cowboys um, are short priced for that game. They're only paying a dollar forty-five, where yeah. uh, Raiders are at two seventy-five. So the so-called experts think the Cowboys should uh, walk that in pretty easy. Yeah, you sh- yeah, you can't discount the Raiders, though. I don't think, can you? They're, they're that little bit of that surprise team. Mm. They uh, seem to step up when they need to, but. They've also got that rubbish game in them too. Yeah. Um, but the uh, seven thirty game should be pretty good. Sharks versus the Rabbitohs. That'll yeah. probably be a pretty good game, I think. Sharks Shark. are improved this year, so. Yeah, and and Rabbitohs. Well, you look at their last four or so years. What have they been like? Preliminary final or something like that. Three years and a grand final, one of them or something like that. Yeah. So yeah, they've, they've been, been up there. They've been all but a grand finalist, you know, one game away from the grand final for, for four years sort of thing. So, you know, they're probably pretty close to uh, to being a, a strong contender. Um, and finally, the Dolphins will get a run against the Roosters. But what do you reckon, Davo? Five, 550 they're paying. I would have thought they'd probably be a little bit more than that. But in a two-horse race, uh, the Roosters paying dollar fifteen. Yeah, so yeah. they stick within ten to twenty. I, I think they've done pretty well, but you just you don't know. You brand new team, 
like, yes, I know Bennett's a good coach, but mm-hmm. how much magic can you work? Yeah, well, you know, they, this week they've come out and dropped um, dropped Milford. Yeah, Milford's so not even in the 17. Meant to be their starting half, and he's cut already. Yeah. After two trial games, he's cut. So, yep. That's so, who scary. they got? Walker and Keary. Uh, for. Um, Oh, for Keary. the Dolphins? No, Dolphins well, have got... Um... No, I'm talking the Roosters. The Roosters. Oh, the Roosters. Got... Oh, yes. Sorry, yes, mate. That's right. Yeah, and who... Keary and Walker. And now, so who's who's in for, for the Dolphins, mate? I haven't been up to date with the Dolphins. I have not followed a single bit of it. Oh, really? Yeah. I've got a young guy, Katoa, at 5'8". Yeah. Uh, he's a relatively unknown... Uh, factor for him. They signed so, him really early on in the season. I think uh, mm. really early on in the days where, um, when they were trying to get you know a few big names and they couldn't quite get some big names. Yeah. So they signed him, and that's Sean O'Sullivan. He's been floating around for a few years now. He, he's pretty. He was pretty handy. So he he's in the halves. He's, he's a halfback, isn't he? Yeah, yeah mate. I've seen something on Twitter. Though. He had an interview on uh, Twitter today, and they. Talking him up a bit, so hopefully he goes all right. You look at their team on paper, and they're, they're you know, Ham- Hamaso at fullback, you know, Jermaine Asako and Bromwich um, Brothers, and T- Tessie New on the wings, you and Aiken, Br- Brenko, Brenko Lee in the centers, um, yeah, the Bromwich Brothers, Jerry Marshall King, Jared Wallace, um, Felice Kafusi. Yeah. yeah, Tom Gilbert, you know, playing Origin, um, Herman Sasa, like he's been a bit of a, um, uh, you know, a, I guess a uh, what do they call it, travelman? I guess you know he was with the Knights there, playing all right, went yeah. to the Titans for a little bit. Mark Nichols, like, mate, he he was good at the Rabbitohs. Mark Nichols, he was real good. Ray Stone, at, he was pretty good at um, at Parramatta there for a while. Um, yeah, like on paper, they've got a team that can match any other NRL team. But who knows? Yeah. yeah. You know, hey, well, it, opening round at $5.50, you'd be tempted just to throw a couple of bucks on because you don't know what they're going to do. That's right. Yeah. And we all, we all know what Bennett's like. You know, he for some reason, he just has this weird knack of being able to get a team ready for a game. I yeah. don't know what it is. I don't know what he slips in their drink of a night time or the morning of, but whatever he does, if he goes around and gives them all blowies, I don't know, night before, but <laughs> whatever it is, it works for him. Teams that he coach, coaches always seem to stand up for some reason, except for Newcastle. Yeah. Nothing does it for Newcastle, mate. No. And there's, there's still a couple of teams you haven't mentioned here, Randall. Oh, yeah. I'm looking no, forward to the next team. Tigers, Tigers and the, the Titans. Tigers and the Titans. 6.15 the Arvo. Um, Tigers are short. I'm a little bit surprised. And I too. between the two coaches too. Apparently Benji and um, Tim Sheens aren't getting on too well together. So yeah, not a good way to, to start the year. They've only got to get on for one year, I suppose. But mm. yeah, I, I think, to be honest, the, the Tigers are probably in the same boat as the Knights. They're probably playing the best team possible to start the year. Yep. They're probably the team that they can um, they can match it with. They're probably going to be around about the same position each, as each other come the end of the year. So yep. a win here can go go a long way to kickstart the year. That's it. But big one though is probably Melbourne Storm. I'm I'm really interested to see how they go this year. Yeah. We just mentioned a fair few names. Talking about um, the Dolphins, you know, the, all these players that have been stalwarts for Melbourne have moved on. Even Brandon Smith moving from Melbourne to the Roosters. Roosters, yeah. You know, it's, it's a fair gap. Jones. I know Harry, Harry Grant's there. Yeah, Cooper Johns is gone. He's, was he at Manly now Manly, as well? Manly, yeah. So Melbourne have lost a few players and a few key players. Um, we, everyone knows though they've got a great system and they just they can take a nobody from any club and turn them into champions. Great coach um, leading the way. Yeah, they've just got 
whatever they do down there is, you know, if you could bottle it, you could be a billionaire to sell it. But yeah, it'd be just interesting to see how they how they start the season after losing so many players. Yeah. Righto. Who's who's gonna win the comp? Let's put it out there now. Timestamp. It is the first of March, nine fifty six PM. Uh, who am I gonna go with? You go um, first, Davo. I'm gonna oh have to think God, about I'm it. still trying the to bunnies, think myself. The bunnies are coming through. You, you think the bunnies, Hutto? Mate, I've got no idea, but I'm that's uh, who I'm picking. That's a that's a fair bet. Um, yeah. A fair bet. I think they'll be up there. I think the Sharks might surprise. I, I think the Bulldogs are another year off. Uh, yeah. They've signed some all right players, but I think they'll be around the middle of the pack. But, um, yeah, Manly. Manly had a good um, preseason, but I don't know. I, 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 uh, Roosters for the salary cap. That's my... That's my win. I think, I think Parramatta are probably going to be pretty close again this year, I, I think. But I might have – I think I'm going to have to go go again for a three-peat sort of thing and go with Penrith. Back to back to back. Uh, if they can be in the top four at the end of the season, I think they've got enough that they'll be able to go on with it. It'll all depend if they if they can finish in top four. If they finish top four, I think they've got enough to be able to still win a grand final. Yep. Oh, well, bar, kicks off injuries, tomorrow night. Obviously. Tomorrow night, yep. doesn't it? What was it, Friday yep. night? Tomorrow night. Uh, tomorrow night. Power of yep. storm tomorrow night. Right on. Right. Smash them, smash them, hit them hard, always kick on the fifth. Always. Uh, Dave, what do you got in, in the way? Cricket, mate, anything, uh, any news? Well, our, the women did us proud again, winning the World Cup uh, to go through the whole comp undefeated. That's their third, I think their third win in a row for the 2020 World Cup. You add in the 50 over World Cup and it's one of the most dominant sides in any sport in history, really. Um, yeah. How they haven't been chosen as one of the teams of the year across the codes, I don't know, but a great job by a great team. So um, they just took everyone apart in that World Cup. Like they were challenged, but not really challenged. So it just shows how good they are. And Meg Lanning leading from the front. Uh, Ash Gardner, a player of the tournament. So it shows why she's earned that uh, half a million dollars um, for the Women's Premier League. So a uh, great result there. The test uh, started today. We, we did pretty well. After the first over, I thought, oh, no, here we go. When Stark had a wicket first ball, caught behind. No, nah, they didn't like it. was given not out, so they didn't go upstairs. Sure enough, clear edge. Third ball of the over. Third ball or fourth ball. Gets one to swing back. LB, given not out. No, nah, we're not going to appeal that either. Showed it would have been out. I thought, oh, great. Here we go. How's this going to go? But we bowled them all out for 109 with the spinners taking nearly all the wickets on a first day pitch. So that says yeah. a lot about it. And then when Kuhnerman we batted. Five, five hmm? wickets for Kuhnerman getting five yeah, wickets. Yeah, Kuhn. Yep. So he's, he's been bowling well, considering he was uh, one of the late late inclusions and wasn't even in the starting 15, I don't think. Um, India came out, started with two spinners. So that says a lot on day one. And we're currently four for 153. So they just nice. got Smith out. So we've got like a, uh, what's that, a 40, 44 run lead. Um, so knowing how we collapse in innings, uh, we'd want to push push ahead. So uh, Uzi was steady as always. He got 60. Uh, Labashane, one kept a bit low for him. He got bowled at 31. Smith was 26. So he got Hanscom and Green batting at the moment. So hopefully if we can get a lead say 150 200 cool. that should be oh i know i'm dreaming there but um it said it's setting up to be a good test again it won't go five days i think we'll be done within three um <laughs> but we need to either draw this test or win this test to keep our spot 
to go into the what they call like the super test yeah. um, as being one of the top two test playing nations. So hopefully, I know it won't be a draw. <laughs> I can't see five days worth, but if we can jag a win, that sets us up well. Yeah. Yeah, we, we don't want to bat fourth inning on that pitch. Not a no. chance. No. Not a chance in hell. But no, yeah, that's why they I need agree. to. They're doing it yeah. pretty. Oh, I, I don't want to jinx them, but touch wood. But um, they're looking pretty com- pretty comfortable at the moment. Yeah, yeah they showed some positive shots and they, they got rid of the sweeps, which is stupid. I love one oh. of the memes going around. I think it was from Sydney Water. Said, don't waste, don't waste water. Use a broom to sweep. And if you have trouble with it, get an Australian cricketer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that that was a good good one. But um, hopefully they've learnt from last test. And if, as I say, we're forty four in front. If we can add another hundred uh, on that, then that's that's not too bad. That hopefully we won't be chasing too much in the second innings. Yeah, yeah. If anything, um, if anything. Yeah, I think the other good meme there, Davo, was I think I sent it to you guys from the water uh, meme from the water boy. Yeah, Henry Winkler's given the old, oh, we'll fake left. Oh, no, we won't fake left. We'll fake right. Or oh, we'll fake to fake. And it was, oh, we'll sweep left. No, we'll sweep the right. No, we'll fake to sweep left. No, we'll fake to fake sweep. Oh, we'll think we're going to fake to fake sweep. Where am I? <laughs> yeah. Gold. Absolute gold. Thank God so, they got rid of the sweep. Oh, well, yeah. we've got a few days of cricket anyway, so it'd be good to see the Aussies go well uh, with crossed. that. So the yeah. women now have a rest. Um, but also the test over in New Zealand. What a cracker oh, that yeah. was. Um, one run, was it? One run. And yeah. the non-no ball call, uh, which is a big talking point. Like uh, England enforced the follow-on to New Zealand. New Zealand got quite a few in front, um, or not quite a few, but only about 250 in front. So the key, uh, Poms thought, yep, we've got this pretty easy. Joe Root runs out the uh, runs out his mate for a diamond duck, who's the guy who got a ton in the first innings. Come down to be like needing 10 from the last wicket pair. They got to two. Anderson's facing a short ball by Wagner. He stood up tall and the ball's cleared him by about six inches. He's looked straight at the square leg umpire who never moved. Now, it was a clear no ball for being too high. Not called. Lose by one run. He gets out next ball. Lose by one run. Wow. But a great, great test. Great for test cricket in general. Two teams that were out there to play for a result. And it was a good test to watch. But, yeah, good talking point. That that bouncer with uh being behind by one run i'll have to go and have a look at that because i didn't see that yeah it is pretty common with those short balls isn't it that there's just so much inconsistency on oh you know it's well over my head and the umpire doesn't call it and mm. all this sort of stuff i wonder like what watching this australia versus india series now and you know labashane gets out and he's uh wandering off and the, you know the the siren goes off and it's like, oh, the siren's going off. Oh, no ball. No ball. Back, back you go. So, you know, or, the, or they're about to come in to run in for the next ball and the siren goes off. Oh, that previous ball was a no ball. Mm. So it would be interesting to see if if they bring it in for height as well. If it does go to the third umpire, yeah. Yeah, not just front foot. But um, I'm loving it as well. We've got uh, West Indies versus South Africa on at the moment as well. So yep. uh, cricket might be finished here in Australia, but there's always someone. There's always a game going on somewhere. Always someone yeah. playing. Well, uh, well, that's good. Bit of cricket there, Davo. Uh, fellas, the NBL uh, went down to the final series, Sydney Kings versus New Zealand Breakers. First game Friday night. Uh, best of five game series. So they play Friday, Sunday, Friday, and then Sunday, and then midweek of Wednesday if needed. So come on, you Kings. Should come be a good Kings. series. So they had a little bit of a rest in between their playoffs and uh, the final series, which is a bit weird. But hey, another thing I forgot to um, 
mentioned, fellas, uh, during the MLB was our pitch clock. Now, we had a um, few interesting things with the pitch clock. We had uh, Manny Machado, obviously, was the first victim there. He reckons he's going to be 0-1 a lot, the way he takes his time <laughs> getting his gloves on and stepping in and out of the box and that. Oh, but imagine, um, no imagine no mark, Garcia Parra, with yeah. the pitch clock. Yeah, well, he, screwed. He even, even Ichiro, he, he took a long oh. time as well with all his wind and his crouch and his twist and his foot taps and yeah what about um did you see the the strikeout the yeah what was it loaded bases two out in the ninth yeah bottom Game. nine loaded bases two out full count game hey. ending what a gem and then uh we'll watch what happens hey eh? and now what he's out they have called strike three this is mayhem. He thought it was all four for the pitcher yeah. taking too long. Yeah. Recalled with the bases loaded <laughs> in a tie game in the bottom of the ninth. This is baseball in 2023. That's going to suck Crazy. if that's the end of a regular season. Imagine a playoff game. Imagine a World Series game that comes down to that. Yeah. Hey, well, Crazy, isn't it? Like, and what what is it? It's so there's the, the whatever the pitch clock is, 15 seconds? Yeah, yeah once the 20 pitcher seconds. Has the ball. Once, a, once yeah. the pitcher has the ball back, 15 seconds, the batter must be in the box looking at the pitcher ready to hit with eight seconds left to hit. Yeah. Or with eight seconds left to pitch. So the, the pitcher's then got eight seconds to do their thing and whatnot. But, man. It's, it's going to be quality to watch. Did you see the Joey Votto one? Where there was like a, a throwback. I can't remember the pitcher, but he like the pitcher gets into a groove a lot. So Joey Votto's just there and stays in his stance. Yep. Doesn't and move. It doesn't, doesn't move. move. Doesn't even step out. Doesn't even take any hacks. It's just like it was a quality at bat. And he yeah. ended up rushing the pitcher, whereas the pitcher's been rushing everybody else. So, yeah. Uh, so how's it go for the pitcher? Like once he gets the ball back, once he comes to a rest. That doesn't matter, does it? That's classed no. as – because if you want to change your speeds, if you want to change your times with runners on, quite often you will come set and you'll stand there and you'll stand there and you'll stand there, which can often yeah. be longer than 15 seconds. Now, is that classed as a ball because you haven't pitched? Yeah, you've you got to be – I think the ruling is you got to be – on your way to the plate, so yeah, you, 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 if you're winding up, you've got to start your you've got to start your motion. Yeah, to which the fine point. Winding so, runs out. Which is fine winding up, but if you're come to a set and you've got a runner on, and you want to put them off and do your timing, doesn't matter. You got to be on your way to the plate by that 15 seconds. Mate, bring Ricky back. That you, he'll be looking. He'll know. Yeah, hey, yeah. He's not going to hold for too long, so I yeah. get to time him quite well because he's got to do it within this time. And only yeah. two pickoffs allowed. And only well. two pickoffs. Yeah, it's so, it's massive, isn't it? Like you, that that clock's pretty prominent. Like that run is going to know what the what the timing is. Like it's not that hard, is it? To yeah, to yeah. The pitcher gets a ball back, and you're there going one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand, and you're getting that same count, and you're going thirteen. 14, 15, see ya. Yep. He's, yep. Got, he's got no option but to go to the plate. So yep. we need to get Ando back to see how he'd feel about those only two pickoffs as a lefty. Yeah, lefty he'd, on the hill. he'd still be throwing them out because he'd just wait for that two seconds and they're either gone or he's out. Yep. Bloody uh, cheap lefties. I did see something actually today or yesterday. There, were, Somebody was trying to backdoor somebody. Catcher tried to throw throw back down to first, and oh, the, the, everyone went off. Yeah, that's out for sure. I tell you what, if it wasn't for the bigger bases, he was gone. It was millimeters. Yeah, and it's like, well, there, there's a difference already. So, there you go. bigger bases. Wow, interesting. I think we had to see lots of running, which is good. Hope so. Hopefully, yeah, a little bit more hit and run and. Yeah, yeah, so you look, you look at the young kids that are coming through a lot of these prospects, and they've all they can all move. Yeah, they've all got speed. That's a all of a sudden speed's become a thing again, so yeah, which is good. 
Yeah, he's I'll bring like it, it on. A lot more hit runs. Make, make something again. happen. Yeah. Yeah. And well, I guess we're going to see more of these 30 30s, aren't we? Yeah. Oh, good. Which, which I'm not adverse to it by any means. Like, I, I think it's a great thing, but yeah, I'd like to see more, more running, more contact yep. hitting, more running. Probably the same as you guys. Yep, for sure. I do love the long ball, but also, you know, the game of baseball is much more than that. So get them on, anyway. get them over, get them in. Did you see also with no shift now, they, they showed one of the lefties up. 2022 showed him hitting straight into the shift where second base was out in shallow right field. Bang, easy out at first. No shift. Second base has played over a little bit. Dive, missed it. Ball to right field, base hit. Yeah. So love it. It'll be, love it. Be good to see more of that. Going to be heaps more of it. Uh, well, we'd, love to see it. we'd love to see it for Toronto. Don't worry. Instead of yeah. watching nine plus. <laughs> Seven players on the right side of the infield when Boss and Moko are hidden. <laughs> so, we, will, we the, will the rules be in play for for local league or? I don't know. That's, that's the same when you bat, isn't it? Know. They're all on the right side. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Correct. Just they all just they all just congregate congregate between you know first base and shallow right field. All seven of them. And the pitchers still try to burn him inside. He still hits <laughs> yeah. a flare over there. It's still somehow gets up there. Gold. All right, fellas. Big week of sport coming up. It's going to be awesome uh, to see plenty more baseball, bit of cricket. Mate, there's V8s coming up in Newcastle. There's all sorts of surfest in Newcastle. Mate, the video camera is going to get a workout in the next couple of weeks for me, that's for sure. It's going to be awesome. Let's hope the swell picks up then. Because quite often you'd love to see surfest, but they haven't had a good swell for a little while, I don't think, have they? No, oh, they've had had a little bit in the last sort of month, uh, but nothing huge. But hopefully, yeah, they, they get a big southerly the week before and blows in. Well, actually, tonight it kicked in and uh, the surf, which should be pretty big tomorrow, I'd imagine, but it will be blowout, I'd say. Yeah, uh, I like a cy- cyclone up north or something might uh, push for a, a good swell. Uh, I'd love to see a full week of surface where it's awesome swell. Um, you don't see it very often. Yeah, like no. David said, we have we haven't had it for a while. It's I think it's been pretty shonky weather the last few years. Yeah, and then COVID yeah. and all that sort of shit. Good time of the year for it, and uh, yeah, hopefully plenty of people get down there and support that as well. All right, fellas, let's get out of here. Another night. Uh, we'll be back next week. See ya. See you guys. Yeah.